Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 24th of May. India warns against masked farmers protest citing COVID super spreader risk. Clashes intensify in parts of Afghanistan amid calls for peace talks. And Nepal President issues ordinance to amend Citizenship Act. And now for all the details. India is fighting the deadly coronavirus with the second wave of the pandemic fueled by a new virus variant coursing through the country. As India's COVID-19 death toll crossed the 300,000 mark on Monday, farmers have stirred now fresh alarm by saying they will hold mass protests across the country on Wednesday to mark six months of their campaign against deregulation of agriculture markets. Indian government leaders appealed to farmers to call off a mass protest this week for fear it could prove a viral super spreader event as the country's overall death toll from COVID-19 crossed 300,000 on Monday. The giant South Asian country has recorded a total of 26.75 million COVID-19 infections. Farmers have now stirred fresh alarm by saying they will hold mass protests across the country on Wednesday to mark six months of their campaign against deregulation of agriculture markets. Over a third have died over the past three weeks during a devastating second wave fueled by a new virus variant detected in India, mass political and religious gatherings and lower of the guard by the public, health officials and experts say. India's health minister Harshwardhan at a group of ministers meeting on Monday said COVID-19 variant B16172 which was first detected in India, is the most common mutation detected till now. India, which is now also battling with mucormycosis or black fungus epidemic, has 5,424 cases, Harshwardhan added. Out of these 5,424 cases of mucormycosis, we have seen that 4,556 cases have history of COVID-19 infection while 875 cases are amongst non-COVID patients and diabetes was present in 55% of the patients. Mucor mycosis is caused by exposure to mucor mold, which is commonly found in soil, air and even in the nose and mucus of humans. It spreads through the respiratory tract and erodes facial structures. In news from Pakistan, Tens of thousands of marchers packed the main street of Pakistan's commercial capital Karachi on Sunday to voice solidarity with Palestinians. The rally, the biggest show of solidarity in Pakistan since the recent conflict, was attended by leaders of different organizations. Thousands of Pakistanis in Karachi city on Sunday held a rally in support of the Palestinians as the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas entered into a third day. Egypt and Qatar, which has ties with Hamas, led regional efforts for the ceasefire that ended the fighting in which aerial bombardment of Gaza killed over 240 Palestinians and rocket attacks killed 12 people in Israel. Sunday's rally called Palestine March was organized by Islamist party jamaat e islami and held on one of the city's busiest and most important roads. Waving Palestinian flags, the protesters chanted and held placards reading, We stand with Palestine, Free Palestine and Palestine Lives Matter. This fire is absolutely true. And in the past, there is also a war in the past. But always, Israel has been उनके मुखालिपत किए उनको तोड़ा है और जब भी उनको मौका मिला है उन्होंने दोबारा हमला किया है ये कोई हल नहीं है हल एक ही है कि इसराइल अपने उन इलाकों से निकल जाए जिन इलाकों पर उन्होंने कब्जा किया है 
In a statement, Palestinian ambassador to Pakistan Ahmad Rabi expressed gratitude for the solidarity and support shown to the Palestinian cause by the Pakistani people, government and political leadership. Pakistan, a largely Muslim country, has no diplomatic relations with Israel. Moving on, locals in remote areas of Pakistan administered Kashmir have accused misappropriation of millions of rupees of funds for the construction of a canal. They blamed corruption and ignorance in the system have become major challenges for the growth of the illegally occupied territory, leaving its future in dark. Locals in remote areas of Pakistan administered Kashmir have blamed the authorities of corruption in the construction of a canal on natural streams in the illegally occupied territory. They blamed millions of rupees were approved for the construction of a canal but unfortunately, it has not been built since the 2005 earthquake in the region. They said the artificial channel was supposed to carry water to the fields to perform irrigation. But the areas which were to benefit from it have been left barren now. People of Pakistan administered Kashmir have been waiting for years now for a better administration that could work for their development. However, corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of the region, leaving its future in dark. In news from Afghanistan, clashes have intensified between Afghan forces and the Taliban in parts of Afghanistan nearly two weeks after three-day each ceasefire. Foreign forces are set to withdraw from the country by September 11, and experts say the Taliban is increasing pressure in the east and south of the country where they have a heavy presence as they take holds of districts and close in on provincial capitals. Clashes between Afghan security forces and the insurgent Taliban have intensified in Afghanistan's Lagman and Baglan, with fighting reaching the centres of both the provinces on Monday. The Dalat Shah district centre in Lagman and some outposts fell to the Taliban in the last few days. The clashes in parts of the two provinces have intensified after the three-day Eid ceasefire from May 13 to May 15. According to local media reports, at least 10 civilians and armed forces were killed due to fighting in the last 24 hours. The Afghan Defence Ministry on Monday claimed to have killed at least 50 Taliban fighters during operations in outskirts of Mehtarlam, Lagman Provincial Centre and Alingar District on Sunday night. Clashes have escalated in at least 20 Afghan provinces as the United States and NATO forces withdraw troops. Washington, neighbouring Pakistan and other countries have tried to pressure the Taliban to reduce violence, negotiate a peace settlement and announce a ceasefire. But progress has been slow and violence has risen. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal's President Bidya Devi Bhandari has issued an ordinance to amend the Nepali Citizenship Act. One of the demands put forth by a faction of Janata Samaj Badi Party Nepal, which has promised support to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli to form a new government. The move comes as Nepal has plunged into fresh political turmoil as President Bhandari on Saturday dissolved the parliament and fixed general elections in November. Nepal's President Bidya Devi Bhandari, on recommendation of the government on Monday, issued an ordinance to amend the Nepali Citizenship Act, allowing children of citizens by birth and children of Nepali mothers to obtain Nepali citizenship. The amendment was one of the demands put forth by Mahanta Thakur Rajendra Mahato faction of the Janata Samajbadi Party Nepal, which had promised support to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Friday to help him form a new government. 
The move comes as Nepal has plunged into fresh political turmoil as President Bhandari on Saturday dissolved the parliament and fixed general elections in November amid a worsening COVID-19 outbreak on the recommendation of Oli's cabinet. Protests were staged by the opposition alliance in Nepal on Sunday against the re-dissolution of the parliament. Over two dozen writ petitions have already been submitted in court against the move. A presidential statement said neither the caretaker Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli nor opposition leader Sher Bahadur Dioba were able to demonstrate a majority to form a new government by the Friday deadline set by Bhandari. Five opposition leaders said in a joint statement that Prime Minister Oli had pushed the country into a serious problem at a time when people were suffering and dying due to coronavirus pandemic. Bangladesh is making desperate diplomatic efforts to procure COVID-19 vaccines from different countries to continue the nationwide vaccination program ahead of a potential crisis. Bangladesh has mounted a diplomatic campaign as part of its desperate efforts to get the coronavirus vaccine to continue the nationwide vaccination program. Bangladesh fears that the B16172 variant of COVID-19 that first emerged in India could rapidly spread in the neighboring country. Describing the vaccine situation in the country a crisis, Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momin said that Bangladesh is desperate to get the vaccines from U.S., China, Canada, Russia and the UK apart from India. Momin made the appeal on British TV channel ITV News on Saturday, a day after he appeared on the CNN network with an identical appeal. Bangladesh earlier entered into a deal with Serum Institute of India to procure 30 million doses of vaccines, but it received 7 million doses in two consignments until February, while the third consignment which was expected in March, is yet to reach the country. Meanwhile, Dhaka has signed a non-disclosure agreement with China on purchasing Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine and co-produced the vaccines in Bangladesh, a month after reaching a nearly identical deal with Russia for the production of Sputnik V vaccine. Coronavirus has so far claimed 12,376 lives in Bangladesh, while the tally of infections surged to 789,080 on Monday. In order to control the spread of COVID-19, authorities on Sunday announced extension of the ongoing lockdown until May 30. As India battles a deadly second wave of COVID-19, residents of a village in northern Varanasi held special prayers and fire rituals this past weekend to appease the gods and goddesses to free the earth from the pandemic. It is believed the smoke that emanates during fire ritual purifies the air and kills impure things. Villagers in Varanasi in India's northern state of Uttar Pradesh held special prayers on Sunday to appease the gods and goddesses to free the earth from the coronavirus pandemic that has killed over 3.5 million people across the world. Devotees, including men and women of Ghara village in Varanasi, performed Havan, Hindu fire rituals and offered prayers for the well-being of their families. The devotees said they believe that 90% of the people are dying out of fear and anxiety attacks. They performed fire rituals so that people can get the courage to fight the disease. जो कहते हैं ना अटैक अटैक के कारण तो उसकी शांति के लिए कहते हैं पूजा से आत्म मतलब संभलना होता है समझ जाते हैं आदमी आत्म निर्भर हो जाते हैं और उससे लड़ने की क्षमता आती है तो पूजा इसलिए होता है हम लोगों का it is believed that the smoke that emanates from a havan purifies the air and kills impure things as of monday India reported 26.7 million cases of coronavirus and 303,751 deaths so far. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन